This is Simon Lake from Better Insect Solutions. Okay. I need to put the microphone closer, do I? Because I saw the guy over there going microphone. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, where are we? Sorry. Whoops. Yeah, so my name is Simon Legu. I work for a company called Eno Plus, and we um, are part of the Big Dutchman Group. And about two years ago, the Big Dutchman Group, you, some of you may be familiar with them, uh, decided to move into the insect business. As a back note to that, uh, you know, we've... 50 years in animal farming. Um, you know, we have um, a lot of in-house knowledge about growing chickens and providing systems for chicken farming. And as I say, about two years ago, we decided to bring in-house knowledge on insects. Today, we are very much involved in developing systems. The, uh, the, uh, the goal is to create a turnkey approach to insect production, whether it's on a small scale or some of the bigger stuff that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, we also do equipment testing and piloting on site. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, most of the things I'll be talking about in the next 10 minutes is, is based on a project we're doing in, in Denmark. It's with a, a group called uh, Enorm Technologies. And over the last year, we, we built a pilot site uh, that was based on uh, a space of around 3,200 square meters, um, producing 1.5 tons of larvae a day. Um, the reason for this is, you know, we wanted to understand how we could develop uh, stable production of, of fly eggs and develop more knowledge about how we were scaling up. Um, we've now dug ground to produce our first site. The intention is to run that at around 100 tons of larvae a day um, and therefore around 36,000 metric tons a year. That sort of site we're seeing in conversation with others is probably kind of mid-size. We do go up to around 60,000 metric tons in terms of the design work we're doing at the moment. Um, one of the other drivers, of course, because we're talking about sustainable production, is that you know these sites have minimum environmental impact and make optimal use of the natural resources that, that are on site to, to minimize the carbon load on the planet. Um, as a group, we, we, we don't do all of it. Um, there are some parts of, um, of insect um, farm building that we aren't involved in, namely uh, logistics in terms of crate management. So we work with companies like Viscon. Um, and in terms of build site construction, we also work with site builders and um, we obviously have our own in-house capability with Agricon, but uh, today I'm going to focus mainly on climate, um, air cleaning, air energy recovery, feed management, and fraz handling. So, um, insect production. Well, it's basically very similar to, to poultry production. The slight difference is in any particular building, you're probably dealing with something like 10 to 15 poultry houses under the same roof. Um, the production of heat and moisture in these in these cells that we that we build is significant. You know, on a typical poultry farm per square meter, we're talking about 250 watts, whereas on these sites we're talking around four kilowatts. So that's a significant uplift in terms of air energy that we have to manage to uh, get the best results out of the out of the larvae, which in, in those terms means that we need to put more ventilation in, managing the heat, um, and adapt the systems that we have today to keep the, uh, the, the, the sort of the um, humidity in the air energy under control. Um, at the moment, um, on the substrate testing, if we base the kind of standard FCR around 1.5, we have achieved down to 1.05 with good climate management, um, but at the moment it Typical trials are running around 1.3. A standard crate, which is one meter by 1.2 meter, um, we're producing up to about 11 kilograms of, of larvae per crate. So um, definitely climate has a big impact um, on, on the end result of, of um, uh, the insect larvae uh, growth. Um, in terms of the environment and um, what we do in terms of emission reduction, and as such, the use of the energy from. Um, to give you an idea, um, insect climate requires about 30 degrees, 28, 30 degrees 
temperature and they run they run around 70 to 80 percent um, rh so that's quite a lot of energy that we have to introduce into the house um, a typical large-scale site 60,000 tons a year will require something like 12.6 megawatts of energy going in so that's significant but fortunately um, we are using air scrubbers to clean the emission and um, I apologize for this because I don't have an insect farm with this technology on but you'll see here this is a pig house and what we're doing here is we are um, drawing the air, the air through an exhaust running it into an air scrubber and we're gathering the thermal energy off the house in the air scrubber and then transporting it through a heat exchanger system to a point where the energy can be used to precondition the building. So that has a significant impact on, on the carbon load in terms of energy to, uh, to heat the houses. Um, I will move on to the next slide and talk a little bit about feed, just aware of the time. Um, what we've learned in, 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 in the trials at the moment is that feed structure is critical. Okay, we're trying to create um, a substrate formula a bit akin to porridge. It can't be too dry, it can't be too wet, and that has um, significant impact on how the uh, how the animals, uh, or how the insects perform um, in terms of production growth, but also in terms of the impact on the climate, which in itself has a has a has an impact on the animals. So you know, an optimal feed program is basically working on feed quality the effects of different types of feed and when and when the insects want to uh, use it. Uh, I won't go into the details on particular feed formulas because that's a, that's a subject in itself. Um, Fraz handling. Um, Fraz is a very valuable byproduct of, of uh, insect production. Um, it has various uses. Um, we've been um, focusing a lot of work on how we can take the dried Fraz pelletize it and turn it into organic fertilizer so um, and I think in, in everything in terms of European regulation on FRAS management there is an issue of sanitization um, we do deal with that within our systems um, so I think you know FRAS, FRAS value really comes out of um, use in fertilizer it can also be used um, as material to burn um, for example, uh, the BHL system, the HSL system, which you may all be familiar with, use it to, to burn FRAS to, uh, to create energy. Um, there is also potential for biogas. Um, the sanitization is expensive and the legislation is developing on that, but we do see potential on that. Okay. If you want to learn a little bit about um, um, waste management and FRAS management, then there's the opportunity to go and speak to my colleagues um, on, the, uh, on the new CRIP stand because the, they are the ones who have the expertise on, on, in that field. Um, and at the end, we have to bring it all together. Managing 0.5 billion animals in full production does take some effort, okay. And it's an interesting challenge. Um, today, the systems aren't really in place. They're not mature enough, but you know, we are developing those systems, um, not to the same extent that we have with, with poultry management. You know, certainly we haven't introduced AI yet. But where we stand today is, is you know, measuring larvae growth, kilos produced, the quality of the fraz, obviously the climate's very important. And that is taking us to where we need to get to, um, but obviously in the future, um, more in-depth knowledge of how the animals are, are reacting to, to production management will, will help us move that even further forward. So that's in short summary what um, an insect farm consists of. I think most of that, those areas will be familiar to all of you because it's not too dissimilar to, uh, to poultry. Um, but I suppose the question a lot of you are asking yourself is, is, you know, so can I get into insect production? And that's an interesting question. Um, today we, um, we have developed two trial systems that are being used for piloting for large scale production. So we have a thing called a grow box. It's basically a containerized uh, insect cell that can run nursery growth and also um, uh, full, full production growth. And we also have a, what's called a feed box, which is we have the ability to replicate full scale um, feed management programs 
on a smaller scale. These systems can be used on a farm to produce larvae for your, you know, the bird, use for your birds. Um, however, to use it to replace so soya at the moment probably is not viable. I mean, the, the cost is roughly three times what you're paying for, for soya. So then we get into discussion about, you know, um, what is the minimum viable uh, uh, level that a, a poultry farmer could produce uh, insects at. But this system, if we go from nursery, from, you know, the eggs to, to grow out, it's about 25 tonnes a, a year. And if we go from baby larvae, so in other words, if, if Thomas's uh, company provides you with a baby larvae, then the grow out is seven days and you can produce around 50 tons a year based on this system. Okay. A little bit more on, you know, being an insect farmer, as I said already, you know, to swap out 50% of the soya, if you had a 100,000 bird farm, would require about uh, one metric ton a day. Um, but as I say, the cost of that is, you know, around 900 euros a ton, as against around 300 for, for the soya. So it's significantly more expensive and therefore at this stage probably not. In terms of diversifying, um, in Germany we're working on a, on a minimum um, viable concept and we reckon there probably it will come around to around something around 2,000 tonnes a year will be of wet larvae will be the minimum viable model and as such we will sell that as a concept where, where poultry farmers can get into the, the insect game as it were and make it a viable business. Um, processing, well you know, there's several options here, we can feed the live larvae to your birds um, or process on site in a small unit and store to feed chickens at a greater scale or sell on to feed companies as an example. So that's just some options to think about. And in conclusion, as Thomas said, insect farming, or was it, no, Jake said, sorry, insect farming is happening now. Um, typical inquiries are coming from farmers saying, can I grow out my own insect protein? Or can I diversify? And we are working on quite a few projects where farmers, for example, layer farmers, are no longer going to progress because of environmental restrictions and they want to convert their, their layer houses into insect farms. That is very, very possible. Um, companies developing their own scalable insect production facilities. We're seeing a lot of companies that have been developing their own genetics and are looking for a scalable model that they can sell on to other companies. And then you are market entrants such as waste management companies where obviously they want to find sustainable ways to deal with their waste. Um, I put this in, the, the, the biggest development at the moment as I've already mentioned is probably around 60,000 metric tons, but of course that can go up. Uh, so that what we say is you know, currently big scale. Um, and we expect, as also Jake said, was that you know, we expect the industry to grow significantly probably 50 times where it stands today over the next eight years. Key to this will be a turnkey solution because that will allow us to reduce the risk of production. You know, you can try and do it yourself. A DIY system can work, but you know, there's so many variables and so many un unknowns at the moment. Having a stable platform to, to develop insect genetics and insect uh, production is, is key uh, to reduce risk to your business. And again, as, uh, as uh, Thomas said, we're on stand 37. So if you want to come and learn a little bit more, I've really scratched over the surface of this, come and learn a little bit more about how these systems work, then happy to talk to you there. Thank you very much. Thank you.